What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic. So a few months ago, I did my very first episode of Ask Majestex and it did really well. I do like to give back to you guys and answer some of your questions, especially ones that pop up a lot. So one question that's come up quite a bit, especially in the past week, considering my smart home tour that I did, was how I configure my Android tablet in my kitchen to automatically switch to the Ring app and show video whenever it senses motion or if somebody presses the doorbell. So I do wanna give you a general overview of how I have that set up. Unfortunately, this is really not that simple. It is sort of complicated and you do have to have a working knowledge of the Tasker app, but there are a lot of videos out there on how to use Tasker. Um, so I won't go into too much detail on how you use it, but I will kind of give you a really quick overview. Hopefully it doesn't take longer than maybe four minutes or so on exactly how I set this up. So the first thing you need to do is download the Tasker app. That's that icon right there. So go to the Play Store, download that. The other thing you're going to need is going to be the notification listener app. Go ahead and download that as well. There are other alternatives to that, but that's the one I use. And then the other app you're going to need is auto input. So the auto input app is going to basically allow you to mimic a touch on your screen. So those three things are what you're going to need. So I'm going to open up the Tasker app. And again, I'm going to try to go through this as fast as I can, but um, you will have to kind of know how Tasker works. So I'm going to hit the plus sign to add a new thing. We're going to hit event. This event is going to be plugin. We're going to choose notification listener, notification listener, hit that button there. All right. So this notification event thing, I'm going to hit any this means it's basically going to choose any event from this app. So it's going to ask you what app. I'm going to hit that button there to choose the app. And I'm going to choose the Ring app. There it is, Ring. There it is, com.ring app. That's what it's called. Now you can put the title of the notification in there. I don't do that. Um, but if you have like several Ring devices and you wanted to just choose that one, um, you would have to put in the actual title of the notification, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to choose any that does work for me since I only use one main ring doorbell and I don't get notifications from the other one. So no big deal for me. Once you do that, that's it for that. Go back. It's going to ask you what you want to do. So I, now I do have one called switch and I do want to go through that. That's going to save me time so I can actually show you what that looks like. All right. So you're going to do the very first thing you're going to do is a wait. And I will show you how to do a wait. So that's really simple. Go all the way down to task, scroll down to wait, and you choose however many seconds you want the wait to be. All right, so in this case, it's going to be however many seconds you want, right? Next thing is going to be launch app. You're going to launch the Ring app. So you go here, hit the plus sign, app, launch app, and then choose whatever the app is. Do another wait for seven seconds. Hit the plus sign. We're going to go to plugins. This is where you're going to use auto input. So this is pretty tricky. So you go to plugin. You go to auto input and we're going to go to action, right? So this is where you're going to configure this. Now you can set a timeout. Um, so we're going to hit the, this uh, edit button here and we're going to do easy setup. So what this is going to do is give us a notification here. So it says navigate to the app you want to act on, go on the screen you want, then come back here and click the add button. So the thing that we want to show is us tapping that pop-up notification within the Ring app that says there is motion at your front door or there is somebody at your front door. Okay, so I just triggered the doorbell. I just walked in front of the doorbell, waited for the notification, launched the Ring app like it's gonna do for us automatically. And then as you can see, I go ahead and do pull down the notification, hit the add button, and then tap on that notification at the top of the Ring app that actually says, you know, there's motion at your front door. So once you tap on that, the auto input is gonna know, hey, you want me to tap on these coordinates on this text whenever that happens. And that's really it. Once you do that and you select it, come back and hit the check mark and you're done. Once you go back, you're good to go. All right, so we set up our auto input action. Then we're gonna have it wait two minutes. Now you can have it wait as long as you want. I chose to do two minutes uh, just because I wanted the Ring app to stay open for two minutes just to show the video for two minutes long. You can record for longer than that if you want or you can have it leave the app open longer than that if you want to, it's up to you. Um, then I do a kill app and then I have a go home. So that basically once I kill the Ring app, it's gonna go home and basically that just that's mimicking like hitting the home button just to go back to the home page. You can have it do whatever you want. All right, so that's it guys. Hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming, but that is how I have the tablet set to automatically open up the Ring app when it senses motion. All right, so the next question is gonna be from Connor Higgins. They say, I know there's no way to accurately quantify it, but if you had to estimate how much money have you put into your smart home since you started decking it out, and would you recommend jumping in head first or gradually building up a smart home over the course of a year or two? 
So if I had to put a price tag on it, which I hate to even think about it, but I'd say somewhere between three and four thousand dollars, maybe. I hate to even think about it. I, I'd hate to think that it's even more than that. But considering how much I've bought over the past few years when I first got into it, it's been quite a bit. Just putting all the switches in my house on it alone has been a few hundred dollars right there. Um, then you got all these hubs and they got the cameras. It adds up pretty quick. I just just know that you should gradually get into it. I don't think anybody should just dump a huge budget into it. Definitely build yourself up because there's going to be things that you're going to want to change over time. There's going to be more things you're going to want to add. So if you spend three grand right up front, you're probably going to spend another one or two grand right after that because you'll want to do more stuff. All right, so the next question was another really popular one from the BenQ 4K projector video, the HT2550. And the question is from Mr. DJX5. And they say, would you take it over your current Optima? So I really didn't quite directly answer this question in the review. And the reason is because I was really, really, really torn on both of these projectors. There's pros and cons to both. Overall, I do have to say, I'd probably say that the BenQ is a better projector overall. And I only say that because it does have a more natural looking picture. Even though it's not as bright, the colors really do pop on this projector. Overall, sitting it side by side, looking at it from far distance, I would definitely say the BenQ looks better. However, the Optima is a little bit sharper. So it really depends on whether you think sharpness or color accuracy is more important. So people that have asked me and sent me messages and emails and stuff like that, I've told all of them the same thing. I'm like, I really don't know. And I've actually not decided on which one I'm gonna go ahead and put up in my home theater. I really do think that the BenQ is a great projector. The only downside is that it does have that light border issue. Now, again, if your screen is really big and you have like 135, 140, 150, it's really kind of hard to see, but you can definitely still see it. Even if you do have a border, like a felt border around your screen, because the area is going to be really big. And my screen is 135 inches. I think the light border was like five or six inches big. So there's no way to really hide it. Um, but it's the type of thing where if somebody came over your house and saw it, they wouldn't really notice the light border or something you'd notice. Um, but again, it is sort of an issue. So it is something to consider. All right. So the next question is another popular one. This is for the Arlo Pro 2 review I did. And this is from Hector Gonzalez. He says, here's a question. If connected to the Arlo solar panel, will the other feature be unlocked or does it need a wall outlet connectivity to set motion areas? So there are a few features, like I said in the review, that are unlocked when you're actually getting wall power through the Arlo Pro 2. Unfortunately, those features are not unlocked when it's connected to the solar panel. That's just because it's actually trickle charging it. It's not providing a full constant charge on it straight from a wall outlet. So unfortunately, no, those features will not be activated. I did have a lot of people ask me that question and I do wish that it did work but unfortunately no it does work well for keeping the camera charged but unfortunately it's not going to enable those features for you all right guys that's going to do it for this video as i always say if you found this video helpful go ahead and mash that like button for me if you haven't already subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button make sure you click the bell so you get notified whenever i post a new video thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video